What I'd much rather do is amend this into the beginning of my hot compost pile. So I'm going to have six or eight weeks of this being part of my composting system at about a ratio of about 10%. So by volume, I want one out of every 10 parts of my pile to be biochar. I'm going to put that crushed up char into my pile and it's just going to become part of that system. And when I'm ready to put that pile on, this char is going to be full and ready to go. All right. And not only that, but it's going to be full of a very diverse group of microorganisms and, and bio life. So I mentioned the minerals that it likes to bind with chemically. I forgot to mention that this is condo space for all kinds of microorganisms that are uh, ha happy and healthy. And maybe most importantly, and what we're just scratching the circus, surface on understanding, is that this is great condo space for mycorrhiza. Nice. Mm. Yeah, hey. boom, exactly. So uh, there's some great research being done at Oklahoma State with biochar right now uh, on, in, on its ability to uh, create environment for mycorrhizae growth. And it's kind of off the charts, like nobody really wants to believe the data, it's so good. Hey, Brian, is, uh, do you sell bamboo on the property to do this? Uh, we don't, we're just, uh, we're, we're hard, we're right now we're in the process of amending as much of Echo Farm as we can. Oh, okay, well I live in Charlotte County on the Wyoka River and if anybody does want to do that with bamboo, just get my number out. That's great. Waiting. Be glad to give you all you can cope. That's Thanks, awesome. Chris. That's awesome. That's awesome. We'll even throw a boat on later. <laughs> <laughs> it takes about an hour, start to finish. Uh, the palm is just a little pile on top to start a fire. Okay. All the way to the lid, all the way to the top. And it ends up being about this full at the end, about three five gallon buckets. When do you use the spacers in the lid? So you know, this is an art as much, this, the burning is an art as much as the science. And so you're constantly adjusting with dirt, how much air is going in and how it's much- like smoking meat. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly right. So what we're looking for is an even amount of discoloration around the, barrel so if we get one side that's going you know burning faster than the other we'll we'll stop the air coming in on this side it really takes intensive management for about 20 minutes of really and your first you'll end up with a lot more ash in your first burn than you do on your third or your fifth burn by your fifth burn you're gonna you're gonna have your material kind of figured out but what changes is how wet your material is that's probably the biggest variable so if you're really dry material, the thing happens faster because you need a lot of heat to take the moisture out of whatever you put in here. But if you're starting with wet material or dry material, or if you've got too much of a mixture of those, then you're going to get that uneven burn where you get a lot of charcoal, but you get several pieces that didn't char all the way through. And you just throw those into your to, an, to another batch. Could you put a screen through here so that you don't get all those embers flying all over and burn down the neighborhood? We don't really have a problem with embers flying out of our system. Oh, it depends on what you're burning, all right? Huh? Yeah. Well, we've put other stuff in there before. Yeah, certain certain wood will cool. tend to snap and pop more than others. Yeah. I mean, you, I would I would say. Or if you're doing like grass, or, or like say if you burned a Christmas tree, you got little tiny light pieces that are going to take off. Yeah. But anything with big chunks is not going to go anywhere. Can you talk a bit about the exhaust? Because some people might imagine black soot coming out of this. Yeah. Place. So case, so when we start this burn, there's you know we're we're pushing moisture off. When we use bamboo, there's not a whole lot of creosotes and other things in these grassy type plants, so they're not the smokiest plant to start with but they do have a lot of moisture. So we're pushing off a lot of white smoke. Uh, and we'll have a lot of white smoke come out of here until probably we get about to here on our burn. And then we have so much heat that it's just, it's all gasified before it comes out of the top of this, of this chimney. Um, it, yeah, it's, it, it's not, you know, there is an exhaust process in this. In balance, I believe that the, the, the carbon sequestering nature of our finished product outweighs the carbon that we're pushing up into the atmosphere. Nice. But when you put just potash on around the tree, yeah. you're not doing that same thing. No, because the ash leaches away. The thing about this what? biochar is it stays in place. Mm -hmm. Once we've amended this, and my, my reckoning right now based on the data that's available is in our soils here in Southwest Florida, if we can get to a 20 tons per acre, amendment rate. Now that sounds like a lot, but you're probably just going to be doing the spaces where your plants are. 
Um, if we can think through, and it's just a matter of doing the math of how much what weighs, all right? If we can think about that 20 ton per acre amendment rate and figure that we're trying to get it into the top six inches of our soil, once we've done that, we don't have to do that again until the year 3300, something like that. You're probably good. 20,013. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a one thing. Once we've done this, we never have to do it again. I read a lot charging with all kinds of stuff. Compost tea. Yeah. Um, fermented this and that and the other thing. Right. Your opinion is just put it in the compost. No, my, my opinion is charge it for sure. Sure. Nobody, I mean, the, there's no long-term studies that really can definitively say this is the best way to charge biochar. My hunch is the more biodiverse system that we put it into charge, the more biodiversity that we're adding into that top six inches of our soil. So it's, I'm just using that conventional wisdom. Um, uh, yeah. Would you mind floating a couple other plants that you would recommend using in this? Uh, instead, of, instead of bamboo. Instead of bamboo. Instead of I, you know, uh, the, the, the fuel wood trees that we talked about, fast growing legumes are perfect for this system. Okay. So like Lucena would, Lucena would be perfect for awesome. this system. What about Brazilian berry? Yeah, uh, the, yeah, there's a lot of... Um, we have uh, a lot of there's, there's a system that we use for that the a, that it. helps Burning kind of combust it a little better. Irritating. I don't know that this is the best yeah. system for that because we've avoided trying that in this system. Yeah. See, the thing is, is that um, when you get this